Hello, this is Jay Carpenter of the Phone Word Forum. Today is Wednesday, November the 28th, 2012. It's approximately 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and today we have Mr. Peter Segedy of Tarina um, joining us, and we will be talking about activities in the <clears throat> European and worldwide community regarding enum research. Somebody just join. Hello. Uh, people are welcome to join the phone word forum. You don't have to announce yourself, but uh, if you would like to, please do. Hello, did someone just join? Hey Jay, it's Mary Redka from CenturyLink. Hi Mary, how are you? Good, thanks. I'm going to put you back on mute. Okay, we have another person from CenturyLink on as well. Good. Jan, um, and I can't remember her last name. Dole. Jan, Jan Dole. Jan. Okay. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Just I'm sorry, who is it? Hey. Hello, this is Peter Sagan. Um, hello, Peter. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm very well. Peter, can you hear me okay? I just put on uh, a headset. I can hear you okay. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. And we also have Tom Vogel on. Welcome, Tom. Thanks for the invite, Jay. Peter, are you dialing in on the number from the Netherlands? Yes, that's the number that I'm using. Is that all right? Or you want me to call another number? <laughs> I'm sorry, Peter, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Are you dialing in on the number from the Netherlands? Yes, that's the number that I'm using. Okay, good. <clears throat> I was trying out some headphones, but uh, I don't quite trust that they're operating well enough. <clears throat> and this one works at least. Yeah, good. Can hear you pretty well. Okay. And I'm by the way, Peter, I'm gonna go on mute um for part of the time because I'm in a somewhat of a noisy environment here. So it might take me a moment or two to rejoin the conversation. Hello, did someone just join? Yeah, it's Bernie from Zurich. Hi. Hello, Bernie. Welcome. Delighted you could join us. Hi, Bernie. Nice to hear you again. Is this Peter? This is Peter. Yeah. Uh, hi. Although this noon I was hearing you, but you didn't hear me. <laughs> Bernie, are you dialing in on a uh, Swiss number? Yeah, it's my first successful attempt to dial in the Swiss number, yeah. Okay, good. I'm I'm just kind of curious how uh, how well the international numbers work on this service. So it sounds pretty good. And uh, I'm the delighted to be here. recognition appears to be a problem. I had to enter the code a couple of times until I finally got it correct uh, right by the system. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand some people get some sort of Spanish recording or something. So, sorry about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's five minutes after. I believe some, probably some other folks will join us. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome Peter Segede from uh who is the Project Development Officer at Tarina in the Netherlands. And Peter and I are uh, kind of spending the day together. I got up at uh, 3.45 a.m. this morning, Arizona time, to join a uh, call that happened at noon in Europe. Um, I just joined it via video conferencing. But um, it's about 10 p.m., I understand it, in Amsterdam. So, Peter, I uh, greatly appreciate you staying up to join the call today and talk with some of the folks in North America um, regarding what's taking place in the academic world surrounding ENUM. And it looks like there's a uh, sort of a revived interest in ENUM. Um, And I uh, wanted to open up this call to folks in North America. This is being recorded, and um, some people will be listening to it afterwards. But I uh, would appreciate it, Peter, if you could just kind of introduce yourself, how long you've been involved in the ENUM realm, and what Tarina is, and a few of the other organizations that are involved in this academic effort from around the world regarding research in ENUM and and basically what's happening over the next um, four to six months. Uh, The call uh, today was quite exciting from my view because of all the interest that was expressed around ENUM and the the momentum that you're building, the momentum that you're driving around, you know, what can take place today and – also, if you could talk a little bit, Peter, about why why you think there's sort of a revival in the realm of enum at this point, and uh, sort of what is driving the resurgence of interest here. So I'll turn it over to you, Peter. Okay, thank you very much. And I think it was a really long day for you, Jay, because you woke up so early this morning. I'm not an early bird, so. Uh, so this time is quite okay to me. Um, so thank you very much for the invitation. And actually, I'm really glad that Bernie is here. He is actually one of the initiators of the <clears throat> NVNM.net service, which I'd um, like to introduce you today. And actually, so, uh, uh, Peter, if you could – I'm sorry, uh, um, it's Jay again. If, um, Peter, if you could speak up just a little bit, I'd appreciate it. It's, your, your voice is a little soft. And, and if you could introduce Bernie, um, what his role has been in the Tarina initiative and so forth, I would appreciate that as well. Okay, so I, I tried to speak up a little bit. So uh, first of all about Tarina. Tarina is the European Association of Research Networks. So basically each European country has a research and education network and we are the European Association of those networks. So we are basically a membership organization. They pay us the membership fee. Um, we also uh, ask for uh, commission, European Commission money, uh, and basically we provide services to primary to the European research and education community. So these national research and uh, education networks are serving the universities, sometimes schools, government agencies, libraries, that kind of stuff in each country. And basically we provide this umbrella organization uh, in Europe to these uh, research networks. Uh, We are not alone. We have global peers around the world. So similarly to Tarina, there is uh, the APEN community in the Asia Pacific region. There is uh, Red Clara in Latin America, Ubuntu Net in um, Africa. And actually, North America, Internet2 is leading the activities, and Internet2, you may know, this is the research and education network for, for the USA. 
So we all talk to these peer networks, uh, and together we try and serve this research and education community, primary higher education, but other, uh, other institutes as well. So I myself am working for this uh, small secretariat staff, which is based in Amsterdam, and I'm a project development officer there. And basically, I'm managing projects and uh, organizing workshops, meetings, task forces. So most of the activities, technical activities of TRENA uh, is organized within the task forces. Uh, and those are basically a group of people coming together with similar interests and talking about technical issues, solutions, especially for research and education and community. Um, yeah, basically, uh, I, I saw you listed the organization SurfNet. SurfNet is basically the Dutch research and education network. So SurfNet is the member of Terena, uh, and I'm not associated with SurfNet. I'm, I'm working for Terena, but obviously we work together with SurfNet as the Dutch research network, as well as many other research networks around Europe. So at the moment, we have 41 members, um, members of the organizations in Europe. And as I said, we are part of this global alliance of uh, research networks. Um, I would leave it to Bernie to introduce himself, but basically I, I, when I joined Terena in 2008, there was a task force which was about enhanced communication services. Uh, and that was the task force where people came together and initiated new ideas. And that was basically the incubator where this uh, and that service was born and it was initiated by Bernie and Kevin. So uh, Bernie, please introduce yourself. Okay, I can try to do that. Uh, my name is Bernie Hünneisen and with relation to Enam, uh, I've been working uh, at Switch at the time, the, uh, the Swiss National Research and Education Network and I was also working in the ITF with the Enam validation stuff mainly, and uh, later on I took over the Enam working group in the IETF. When it comes to the NRENAM, as uh, Peter already said, uh, around uh, 2006, we had the uh, idea to make some trial with an alternative uh, tree for those countries who do not have E164 ARPA access. Could be political, could be uh, uh, the, the regulator is lazy or whatever. So they could have an alternative, and these two trees would actually work together. Uh, like you first queried E164.ARP and then the NRENAM. That was the basic idea. Uh, later on, it was taken over by uh, Tirena, and uh, the NRENAM got a bit more important. But I guess Peter is telling you more about this. Uh, nowadays, I am running my own company for consulting services in standardization and internet technology in general. That's it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bernie, for this. Um, and as you just said, basically, uh, we met before uh, this initiative started in TFECS, the Terena Task Force, and it was in 2008, I guess, when Terena took this service over. It was a kind of a private initiative, and we took it over as a community effort. And from now on, we are, or I am responsible for uh, this service, for this ENAM service, which is basically for our community, for research and education community. We call it as an ENAM service for academia. And I mean, academia, this is basically universities and, and the research institutes together. Um, so I think it was, it would be good to have a little bit of overview about ENAM and what ENAM is. So basically, ENAM is a standard protocol, which basically translates the E164 numbers, the phone numbers, to URIs, these uh, unified research identifiers, using uh, a DNS structure. So uh, what people can do, they can assign various URIs services to their phone numbers. So you basically don't have to announce all your uh, numbers, I mean the phone numbers, the CPU URIs, the GDS numbers, uh, the email addresses, web URLs, stuff like that. You can associate all these 
identifiers to your phone number. And basically, this phone number is listed in a DNS server, and you can do a very simple DNS lookup uh, to get to all the, all the contact points that you have. And basically, the ENAM protocol is independent from the underlying communication infrastructure or technology. So ENAM, as an overlay, can work on top of any communication network, on top of you know, BSDN applications, standard BSDN applications, as well as on seat peering or the h 3 to free video conferencing uh, infrastructure. I've already mentioned e email uh, or um, bird by web, stuff like that. So there are more than 30, 40 various uh, services or applications that can work together with ENAM. So ENAM basically does not affect uh, the, the application level functions and the core route, routing and signaling functions of the underlying infrastructure. So it works as an overlay on top of that and basically provides uh, a, a, a DNS lookup, a discovery service for all those uh, applications and services that can be reached via your simple phone number. So this is the basic idea behind the protocol. Uh, the protocol is Great, it works. Um, and when it comes to nvenum.net, this is basically a service based on this protocol, uh, which where we um, operate the, the national research networks operate a DNS infrastructure with a, a root DNS, which is called the tier zero DNS, and all the other research networks participating in this service operate their own national DNSs at the tier one level. Um, and this is basically the national number registry as well as the registrar function, some cases the number validation entity as well. Uh, and at the lower layers, we have the, the registrars, the end users basically, who can register their own uh, phone numbers um, into the DNSs. Or that function is, can, can be hosted by, by the end run, by the research network itself who operates the, the national DNS. So this is basically the, the structure of the service, which is very simple. Uh, and as I said, it is operated by the research education community. The service is coordinated by Terena, by the organization where I work for. Um, technically, the tier one uh, DNSs are hosted by each participating country. Uh, and the tier zero, the root, is hosted by the Hungarian Research and Education Network. And we have two secondary DNSs to improve the reliability of the service. One is at switch, uh, the switch and then another one is Khan at the Croatian and then. So this is basically the current infrastructure. Uh, and that's where we basically we operate uh, this enum and nrenum.net as a service. So basically, this is a DNS tree uh, where each country does the, the number delegations to it. Um, about the, uh, the service usage, at the moment, Peter, we're 80. Yes? If you have any I'm questions, sorry. just interrupt me, please. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pause it just a little bit here and ask anybody on the call if they have any particular questions or any particular topics you'd like for us to cover before we move on. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, Peter. Um, could you tell us about how many countries and, and uh, I, I think you said 41, you have, you've got 41 members, is that correct? How many countries and what countries around the world are participating in this initiative? Yes, so actually, Trena, as a membership organization, we have 41 members, national members in Europe. But we have this service. And obviously, not all of our members are participating in this service because not all the research and education networks uh, in, in those countries are interested in voice over IP or video conferencing. And basically, this service is for those entrants, those research networks who are in the business of, uh, uh, you know, IP telephony um, and video conferencing. At the moment, out of those 41, we have only 14, one four. European countries participating in this particular NVENIM.net service. But this service, as I said, it's not just for, for Europe. It 
try to make it as a global service for the global research and education community because we believe that research is global, education is global, so all these uh, services should go global. Um, and I'm glad to say that we have uh, participants outside of Europe. Uh, we have Arnett from Australia, we have RMP from Brazil, uh, we have Argentina, and we also have a trial in the USA. So Internet2 from the USA uh, is participating in this service, and now we are running a trial for the plus one uh, country code delegation to the nvenum.net tree. And I can talk about it later. I, I guess you're interested in, in that as well. Yes, very much so. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm interested to find out who uh, Internet2 is, and I know they <coughs> recently um, obtained the delegation for the country code one for trial purposes, so would like to uh, find out a little bit more about that as well. So go ahead. Sure, I, I can definitely talk about that. Uh, so basically Bernie already mentioned the uh, golden tree, which is the uh, – um, official ENAM tree operated by uh, Right and CC. Right and CC is the regional uh, internet registry in, in Europe, uh, and they operate the uh, e 164 ARPA tree, which is the golden. They call it the golden ENAM tree. And basically, the uh, uh, the idea behind the golden tree was that in the end, there's going to be only one single uh, end user ENAM tree. So that's why they call it the golden tree. Uh, and they started to populate that tree, but some uh, reasons in, in, in a commercial world, it, it has uh, never been really taken up by, by commercials, especially by uh, big tackle companies. They are not really um, interested in uh, you know, providing all these user data into public uh, uh, DNS uh, infrastructures. Um, so it's uh, in, in a commercial world, it's uh, it's a bit tricky, and it has never really been taken up as an end user enum service. But as I said, our community is different. Our community is the research and education community, which is basically a non-profit environment, um, and uh, we work together very closely, very tightly coupled, uh, and uh, that's why maybe this kind of um, services and especially the interoperability between voice over IP infrastructures, the national voice over IP infrastructures as well as the national video conferencing infrastructures are important uh, for all, all global community and uh, that's one of the reasons why I think this uh, NRENOM that initiative, which is the ENAM initiative for academia, is, is, uh, is, is really flying and still growing and it's also uh, recognized by RIP and CC uh, as the only still growing uh, end user uh, enum initiative uh, which is um, i think it's a, it's, a, it's a good achievement so far peter if i could interrupt you for just a moment because i'd really like yeah. to emphasize the point that you just made you know i've been <clears throat> involved in enum you know from the end user opt in uh, version of enum for a long time about 10 years now and, you know, I would say that most people have considered this pretty much a dead initiative, uh, at least up until maybe a couple years ago. But particularly from the video conference uh, call that you had this morning, or in your case uh, today, um, it looks like there's a significant resurgence in, in ENUM, and uh, I'm going to assume that you know your research is in the realm of end user opt in mean um, based upon the presentations that you um, were working from today and but really what I got out of the the call today was that you know up until recently up until the let's say the proliferation of the smartphones and you know the the mobile technology that's uh, the predominant force today, or a predominant force, Enum has sort of been sort of pigeonholed as a VOIP um, construct. And you know, while it might have had certain advantages, it just wasn't quite enough to really push the initiative uh, into the commercial realm. 
But now the sense that I'm getting from the, the call and the conversation today is that the, the video conferencing has sort of been the driver of a resurgence of interest in this area. Would you say that the video conferencing is what's sort of rekindled the interest in doing research in, in, in user opt-in enum? My take is that the commercial world is always uh, looking for a good business case or why you added services, um, you know, where they can really do some business. And there is no such a business in this Enum uh, idea. Uh, and there is no killer application. And so far, it was only voice over IP where uh, basically Enum was useful. So those uh, smaller voice over IP service providers um, are currently using Enum that they want to interconnect with each other. And, and I'm talking about end user Enum. Uh, of course, Enum as a protocol is used in internal domains in private networks for, for number portability and for, for other stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, end user Enum was always a, a, a bit. Um, Advan out for for the uh, for the uh, commercial world, and you asked about video conferencing. So basically, video conferencing was initiated in the research and education networks. So that was an initiative of this community, of my community, in a way, and that could be another application uh, where we can introduce uh, Enum as a as a useful uh, technology or a useful service. But even together with voice over IP. Uh, these are still not the killer application, and there is no one single killer application that can, uh, you know, make uh, Enum end user Enum is a real success. So we can try, we can looking for, you know, value added applications on top of that. And there are some ideas, but none of them are are, are big enough uh, to to make it, you know, really attractive for for a commercial environment. That's that's my view. And as I said, our environment, this research and education environment, is not the commercial environment. So we are researchers, we are students, we are moving around, we are, um, you know, working globally together, um, and that's why I think this this uh, Enum initiative um, sort of works in in our community. But I don't really think that there is a real uh, commercial uptake of of this service really soon. So if I could just kind of summarize your, your view, just to make sure that I understand it, Peter. There's the commercial application is still cloudy, at least in, for the general case for end user opt-in enum. You know, certainly private enum has exploded and you know, much of our contemporary communications and media touches upon uh, private enum. Um, but the, so the interest within the research community is that, uh, would you just say that there's, they see some sort of interesting, I don't want to use use case because I don't think there's clearly a use case. Um, but it's, it just looks like an interesting area of technology that um, the people in this realm are interested in exploring further. Uh, I'm still trying to kind of get my trying to get my uh, an understanding of what has sparked you know the recent interest that seems to be emerging for you know, researching the enum possibilities. So basically within our community, as I see, the main goal of the research education networks is to keep the traffic, all kinds of traffic, on the research networks end to end. Because they have all these national networks we have a pan-European backbone network, which is called Geant, interconnecting all the research networks. We have 
cross-Atlantic fibers to internet to uh, to Latin America to Asia. So we have basically a global IP network, um, and which is operated by the research and education network, operated by this community. Uh, and the, in order to make these uh, communication infrastructures, I mean voice over IP as well as video conferencing. Uh, as low cost as possible, I would not say cheap, but you know, reasonably, reasonably cheap. Then, uh, <laughs> then uh, I think this is this is one of one of the use cases that uh, that uh, the research and education networks are, are, are trying to, uh, you know, uh, emphasize, and that that's why I think the uh, Imam as a, as a, as, a, as a service is is important for us because. Basically, if uh, you have a voice over IP infrastructure, a video conferencing infrastructure, they are interoperable at the protocol level, uh, and you can basically make a call from one uh, domain to another domain uh, via the SIP peerings uh, or interconnected networks. Basically, that traffic do not touch on the, the telco networks and the telco infrastructure. Therefore, it remains all the traffic remains in the research and education domain end to end, and that's basically the use case uh, for for this uh, for this enum take up in, in our community. Okay, that clarifies it a bit better for me. So, thank you. Thank you. This is Bill. Uh, uh, just wanted to add something to your question about the use case of video conferencing. I always felt the uh, video conferencing was a big use case inside the research community, inside the national research and education communities. And it also has the potential to be a use case in public for ENAM. But the point is that not so many video conference, conferencing systems are deployed, so it's kind of not so relevant use case. Good point. I agree. But at least what we try to pilot with this uh, joint working group between uh, the ed uh, EduConf and Enrenum.net is exactly the video conferencing use case, if you like. So EduConf is the uh, European video conferencing initiative. Again, it's within the research and education community. We have a big European project. And one of the tasks of this project is called EduConf, which is, as I said, the, the Pan-European Video Conferencing Initiative. So basically, they want to interconnect all these national video conferencing infrastructures that are in Europe uh, together, and they need uh, a seamless and very easy dialing solution structure to that. Up until now, they were using GDS. This is the global dialing schema, basically invented for video conferencing, which requires um, a very strict hierarchy of uh, gatekeepers, video conferencing gatekeepers, um, and they have, a, I would say, quite messy dialing structure on it, uh, which is you know, not really uh, working at the moment. And what we're going to try with this pilot, with this uh, collaboration between EduConf and, uh, and Renum.net, is to use ENAM as a dialing solution on top of the video conferencing infrastructure. So that is basically the pilot. The, today I had a video conference with both communities to, to kick off this pilot. So if you take a look at the slide that uh, Jay distributed, uh, the second half of the slide that is about this pilot kickoff, where basically the idea is to enable ENAM and renom.net lookup on the gatekeepers, the video conferencing gatekeepers, and delegate all the video conferencing numbers to the enrenum.net tree. So basically, they can use enum uh, to, to find, you know, uh, the, the caller should find the callee on the other end. Um, and that's going to be piloted in the next coming four or five months. It's under the project called Geant, which is a pan-European uh, project, and EduConf is one of the tasks of the project. Um, so that's 
that's basically uh, the, the idea where we try and bring together the, the video conferencing infrastructure with the, with the voice over IP infrastructure and provide a seamless dialing solution on top of these. And it's often referred as, uh, as unified communication infrastructures because in some countries, uh, these infrastructures are already uh, connected together. It's in progress, basically. So there are some countries where the, the video conferencing infrastructure is completely separate from the voice over IP infrastructure. In some other countries, they've already managed to interconnect the two infrastructures together, but they still need a seamless dialing solution on top of that. And we believe that Enum and the nvenum.net service can provide uh, this, uh, this dialing solution on top of that. And that's what this pilot is going to be. Okay, great. And so again, uh, just want to make a remark to uh, what he said about uh, GDS. The original idea when we started with Enrinum was also like get rid of this GDS already back then. It's still alive, and uh, I'm really hoping that it gets replaced by uh, Enrinum because it's a much more flexible solution. Thank you. Yes, so basically the DNS lookup is, is something that, that's reliable and that works. So as, as, as the Internet works, then you can basically uh, do a DNS lookup and you type uh, the URL and you get back the, the IP addresses of the service. So that is exactly the same technology. It's just a simple DNS lookup. So you have to operate the DNS infrastructure uh, and then uh, basically the, the email protocol works. And Peter, today on the video conference call, there was talk of a face-to-face -face meeting sometime in late February or March. Um, would you like to, would you please say something about what, what the intention of that face-to-face -face meeting is and um, what sort of activities might be taking place between now and the, the meeting in spring? Sure, sure. So, uh, as I said, we have this uh, little pilot. The kickoff was today, earlier today. Um, and this pilot is going to run until March 2013, so March next year. And within this uh, four, four and a half months, we're trying to pilot the uh, interoperability between the video conferencing infrastructure and the nvenum.net service. Uh, the very first step that we're going to do is to create a survey with some questions, and that survey will be uh, issued, uh, I think, pretty soon, uh, because we don't really have too much time to work on this. Uh, and we're going to basically survey uh, the uh, national research education networks and their current situation within the countries in order to understand what are the potential implementation options of uh, that, that uh, solution that we basically want to pilot. Um, and right after that, we're going to work on some implementations, basically how to enable the nrenum.net lookup on the word keepers. So that's basically on the video conferencing side. Uh, and how to delegate the video conferencing numbers uh, which are, I would say, mostly virtual numbers into the nrenum.net service. So one important point here uh, is that in some countries, the video conferencing infrastructure is using wallet real numbers according to the ITU regulations and according to the national dialing plans. But in some other countries, those are virtual numbers, so no real E164 numbers, but some created virtual numbers, and there is the uh, threat basically that those virtual numbers are clashing with each other if we interconnect all these video conferencing infrastructures um, around Europe or around the globe. Um, so that's basically a, a, a policy issue, a regulation issue that we have to solve and have to see how to delegate the video conferencing numbers, both the real or the virtual numbers, into the nrenum.net 3 
without really um, um, causing any harm to the operation of, uh, of the of the nrenum.net service. So that's the issue that we have to solve on the nrenum.net service side. And that's why we're going to pilot various implementation options, how we can deal with virtual numbers within the nrenum.net service tree. Um, and we will open up all these potential implementations to the community to test it, to, to try it. Uh, and then uh, as a kind of a closing act of this uh, little pilot, four month uh, long pilot, would be a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, I expect at the end of February, early March next year uh, to be organized for, to the pilot participants to come together and uh, take a look at the implementation options, evaluate them, and come up with some policy recommendations and as well as technical recommendations. But I, uh, my take is that this issue is more like a, a policy issue uh, to agree on the procedures, how to delegate, how to select, how to delegate virtual numbers, uh, video conferencing numbers into the tree. So the, uh, the outcome of that workshop hopefully will be a set of recommendations for national policies as well as the policy of the uh, uh, nbringum.net service uh, itself uh, about you know, delegating video conferencing numbers, real numbers uh, to uh, the nbringum.net tree. So basically this is uh, the plan with the project plan with these milestones. The first milestone is the survey. The second one is the implementation of the various options coming out from the survey, and the last point would be a face-to-face -face meeting workshop um, a, a, in around February, March timeframe next year to take a look at these options and come up with some recommendations uh, for, for, for the uh, production environment, basically. And at this point, it's important to note that uh, this uh, activity is recognized by the RIPE and CC Enum Working Group. So this is basically the working group at RIPE uh, who is responsible for the golden Enum tree, the golden uh, and user Enum service. Uh, and we are liaising with that group. So there are discussions between the two groups and that, uh, especially would like to extend the invitation to the RIPE community, to the RIPE Enum Working Group participants as well to come to that workshop and express their, their opinion, their, their view on it, because we sort of consider the nrenum.net tree as a playground for NRAMs, for, for research networks, and for, for this community where we can implement uh, various options for short pilot periods. It's not a problem at all. While on the production level, golden enum tree, I can imagine it might be a problem if they just uh, want to try out uh, things in the production environment. So basically what we can do under this pilot is to have a test environment uh, created where we can play with various implementation options, uh, evaluate them from, from various aspects, and just come up with some recommendations that might be interesting for the Golden Women Tree Service as well. Peter, the <clears throat> I think within the uh, RIPE ENUM working group, um, there was sort of a, a adjacent or subgroup called the Enum Federation over there in Europe. Are they active in your initiative at this point? Are you familiar with the Enum Federation? Um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm familiar with the Enum Federation, yes, and I'm pretty much believing the federative model. So I, I don't really think that's going to be uh, one golden tree in the end. I, I believe it's going to be a federation of trees. Uh, and uh, I, I just do hope that our tree, the nrenum.net tree, could play a significant role in that, in that uh, federation, federation model. Um, how to say, there is no uh, proactive participation from the uh, RIPE Enum working group to the nrenum.net group. It's more like other way around still. So uh, we usually invited to come to, this, um, to the RIPE uh, Enum working group meetings, 
now there is a, a regular update about inrenum.net each and every RIPE meeting. Uh, they are looking at the statistics, our statistics. Uh, we have a nice DNS crawler application on our tree. So if you go to crawler.nrenum.net, you can see the live uh, data from the tree, basically the number of uh, the numbers that are delegated from each country. Um, so this, this DNS crawler application crawls on the tree basically and collects all the numbers that are delegated and that that is that can be seen on on, on the website uh, live. And uh, basically there is the same crawler solution called application running on the golden tree as well. So if you open up the two pages next to each other, you can really compare the the two. Uh, uh, trees. So, uh, as, as I said, we are recognized by the uh, RIPE Inner Working Group, I guess, for a while, uh, but it's not a kind of a, a competition. So, we should, we should work together. We should provide a complementary solution to the Golden Tree, and that's why I think at some point, I think we should uh, join forces and, and, and create a, a Inner Tree Federation uh, where we might be, you know, could be include other other trees um, as well. I don't know what's your view, Bernie, about that. Uh, this is Bernie. I think the question was a bit different. There was an organization called the Inam Federation, and I think that's what the one who asked the question was okay. referring to. Um, that Inam Federation, the last I heard from Pavel Duma is that they decided that they will conclude the Inam Federation by the end of this year because there was no point in continuing the original goals. I don't know more about it. And that's the last I heard. This is the initiative from the Czech Republic, right? I believe uh, it's a five country consortium consisting of the UK, Germany, Austria, the Czech Republic, yeah, I know. And, okay. and maybe the Netherlands. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Bernie, for that clarification. Um, while we're talking about, was there anything else you wanted to address um, on that particular topic, Peter? Or Bernie? Uh, basically, a few words about the, the uh, U.S. delegation, the plus one uh, country code. Right. Uh, so basically, I think it was in 2007 when the Golden Inam tree uh, tried to, to make a, a little pilot or trial in the U.S. and delegated the plus one uh, country code to the tree. And as far as I know, uh, the, the result of, of that pilot uh, was basically the, there is no technical, serious technical issue or problem with that that can be done. They also were about how uh, different countries under the plus one domain, because there are more than 20 different countries, I guess, under, under plus one, and the North American dialing plan is uh, quite mixed. So there are countries in between. Uh, in, in area codes in, in, inside the U.S., which is uh, quite difficult to do the delegation than in one single block. So that's kind of a technical issue, uh, which was more or less solved by uh, this pilot in 2007. So we, we took a look at the results of that pilot, the Golden Tree pilot for the plus one delegation, and we basically proposed a very similar model uh, to, to Internet to basically run one DNS A server for the whole plus one region and then run another DNS B server under that uh, plus one uh, region and they can delegate all the area codes in the US to that server and basically this leads the opportunity to other countries under plus one to join directly to the DNS A uh, server in the region. So basically uh, the, the technical solution is there. Uh, it works. Uh, what they have to figure out is more like uh, again the policy and the and the, and the political aspects of of that. And again, I can just come back to this research and education community. Uh, and I think we have long traditions to work together. Uh, and there's already an agreement, I think, between Internet Two, which is the research network for for the U.S. 
and Canary, which is the research network for, for Canada. Uh, and they basically agreed that Internet2 can operate the DNS for the whole plus one uh, region. Uh, and I just assume that they are collaborating with other countries in North America, so there should not be very serious political issues uh, with this delegation. And actually, as I said, technically, we, we kept the, uh, the opportunity in, in the architecture that other countries can be delegated to plus one as well. So, uh, uh, so we basically did the same as it was done in 2007, and we delegated plus one to Internet2, uh, and they, started, they already started to populate some numbers. I think it's uh, only from, from Internet2 as the organization, but uh, very soon there will be other uh, state research networks joining to, to this and delegating their, their numbers into the tree. So it's, it's, it's growing, it's running in the U.S. Um, we still call it as a pilot, and I think I just have to get back to, uh, to Internet2 to, and ask them if they are now uh, confident uh, enough uh, to, to, to make it as a, you know, as a real delegation of the plus one zone to Internet2. To. And you ask my contact points, the guy is called Ben Feynman. Maybe you know Ben Feynman. He's from, from Internet2, and he's the coordinator of uh, Voice over IP and um, video conferencing infrastructures of Internet2, as far as I know. And he's basically my contact point as well uh, regarding this service in the U.S. So it's still, we call it still as a pilot phase. For, for plus one under the NVENO.net zone, but uh, I think very soon it will be, it be finalized because there is no technical uh, issue with, with the delegation itself. And uh, as far as I understand, the, the policy issues uh, are, are clear as well. Yeah, I think that's yeah. been the vexing part of Indies or Optin Enum is the policy issues. You know, the. Um, <clears throat> Some people point to the, the the business model, and you know it's, it's my view that it's hard for the business model to emerge until the policy issues are uh, developed, let's say. And you know the, the technical side, as as you're mentioning, is I think pretty well vetted and it works. It's um, just how do you get technology to dance with the business model with the policies. And, you know, that's, at least in my view, been the real stumbling block. Um, exactly, yeah. To, to really having this, really have what I consider to be a, a very exciting possibility, you know, become reality. So, um, so... I guess we could, before we get into ways to participate or possibly participate or whatever, um, I guess we could just pause because we've got about seven or eight minutes left till the top of the hour and just see if there, anyone has any questions, any, anything that we haven't covered that you'd like to cover. Okay. So, Peter, if you could, I gathered from the conversation earlier today that participation is really open to folks that want to participate and that are willing to spend some time and, and contribute. Is, is that the case? Yes. So, basically, this pilot that we just kicked off is a joint effort between the Educonf task and the Envenom.net. The Envenom.net side is open, although the Educonf side is not entirely open. This is only for the, the project participants, of course. Most of our members, the European Envenoms, are participating in the GM projects where this uh, Educonf task is. So uh, most of the European participants in Envenom.net can work on this anyway. And the issue is more with, with the global partners, so the folks from, from Australia, from the U.S., from Latin America, so they can really participate. As I said, the Envenom.net side of it is open. 
so they can join the discussion list. We have an email list, which is discussion at nrenum.net. So you can subscribe yourself. I'm the administrator of that list, so I can approve the, uh, the, uh, the subscriptions, uh, and you can really participate in the discussions on the nrenum.net side. Um, and even if you want, you can contribute to this. The only thing is that, of course, we cannot really compensate you because all the budget that we have for this pilot is associated with this European project. So basically, all those participants who are in the project can be funded by the project, but the others outside of the project cannot be funded, obviously. Um, so it is open. The discussion list is definitely open, and I'd just like to encourage everyone to, to join the list and uh, come and talk to us and be involved in the discussions um, and we try and take into account all the possible views, not only from Europe, but, but also from, from outside of Europe that, that you think is interesting to, to, this, to this pilot. Uh, and the other thing is the uh, RIPE Enum Working Group, which is, I think, again, open. Although RIPE is primarily for, for, for Europe and Asia and Africa, and you have your own uh, regional internet registry in the U.S., which is ARIN, AVIN, I guess. This is the, the American uh, regional internet registry. I, I don't know if they have any. I don't think that they have any uh, enum working group. Uh, but I think if you want, you can participate in the right enum working group as well. There are two chairs of it, a guy from Germany, another one from Ireland. Uh, you can go to the right uh, website and you can just uh, look it up yourself. Um, and I think you can join to that uh, working group as well. As I said in the beginning, we really liked with, with them. So there are regular talks between the RIPE Enum Working Group and the NRENUM.net participants. Uh, but the, just again, the NRENUM.net side is fully open, and I really appreciate uh, your participation and any contribution that can come to this, to this panel. Well, um I think it's a very, very exciting uh, initiative that you that you're uh, pushing forward, Peter. And um, so I'm very interested in following it. And I'm not sure what uh, you know. Hopefully, we can get additional participation from North America. Um, I know that from the conversation earlier today, it sounds like there is at least one commercial entity that's. Uh, Involved, which is Voxbone, and uh, are there other commercial entities, or is everybody else pretty much in, coming from the academic arena? Bird and I is a set of commercial, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so we have some participants. Uh, I haven't looked at the discussion list recently, but I think there, there are some interests from basically from smaller voice over IP providers from Europe. I think there is an interest in it, especially Enum is sexy for them. Obviously, it's, it's really scary for the big tacos because it uh, allows us to make free calls and uh, route the traffic via the internet instead of the telcos, so it's really scary for the big telcos, but for smaller voice over IP, especially voice over IP providers, this technology, this whole pilot and all this research around it is quite interesting, and, and I think I have to uh, look at the, the discussion list, the actual uh, subscribers. I think we have uh, roughly about 100 people on the list at the moment. I think there are some smaller commercial, uh, some participants from small commercial companies there, but quite a few, not, 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 not a lot for sure. This is Bernie. Okay. I'm kind of a commercial participant, although I come from the area of National Research Education Network, but now running my own company, I'm kind of interested, interested from a commercial side as well. Okay, great. All right, well, we're at the top of the hour. Um, Peter, Bernie, is there anything you'd like to say to conclude? Nothing to add from my side. Okay. 
I just like to say thank you for for organizing this, and it was really a pleasure to be here and talk talk to you about this initiative. That I just uh, I'm just hoping that uh, you guys found it interesting, and as I said, the participation is is open. So uh, just contact me or, or subscribe yourself to the list and uh, be part of it. Thank you, Peter. I acknowledge you for you know really being a an organizing force for this. Um, and I, I look forward to seeing how this all uh, takes shape. So unless there are any other questions, um, we'll go ahead and conclude today. The uh, next Phone Word Forum will be on the last Wednesday of December, which is the 26th, the day after Christmas. I'm guessing we're just going to use that as a an open session and just sort of review some of the topics that we've covered over the year and um, you know, leave it open for any general comments, uh, considerations, topics, um, and maybe some suggestions for the 2013 Phone Word Forums. There are some folks that are uh, considering being special guests on the call in 2013. I'm pretty excited about uh, some of the folks that are um, looking at it. And it's always on the last Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m. Eastern. We always use the same dial-in number. Hopefully in 2013 we'll start to experiment with Google Hangouts and you know maybe some other innovative uh, mixed media uh, methods of having our phone word forums. So I would like to thank everybody that's been on the call today. I wish you all happy holidays and that will conclude today's phone word forum. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Thanks. Jay, can you remain shortly? Sure, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. I was just wondering if people had the contact information from Peter and myself, or are you going to send it to the people who attended the call? In case they um, have some questions or... Bernie, why don't you go ahead and give your contact information? I included you know, the, uh, the Tarina and the uh, Inrenum uh, websites. Uh, for for Peter, but uh, I would appreciate it if you could, you know, give us your contact information as well. Yeah, I just wonder where I should send it to. What? Um, why don't you send it to me? I'll post it on the PhoneWord Forum website, and then you know it'll be there for everybody to uh, to use. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Okay, great. Good. And I'll also Thank you. post. Peter's information oh. as well. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks again. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye bye.